pay you. We're back at it again. So anyway, I had an interesting experience last night. I went down to uh, another part of Perth to talk to a leader of the Kiwi community. Now, you know how we gave you the uh, 10 minute video with all the pictures on the board? Uh, that part of the PowerPoint presentation that I still haven't put online, I don't intend to at this stage, and when we do, we're gonna lock it so that no one can see it but our own loyal, faithful followers. So, I come to watch it. This is how he responded. He said, mate, this is a load of crap. <laughs> That's what he said. He said, uh, it's a con job. It's deception. It's a dream. That's what he said to me. I said, oh, yeah. All right. <laughs> I said, uh, I didn't come here to sell you on our concept, so I don't like selling. I just come and find out whether I'm wasting my time working with the Kiwi community or the Maori community. Because to me, it's neither here nor there. Right? I'm only doing research. Do I waste my time dealing with the Maori community in Perth? <laughs> That's right. So because at the moment we're busy and we're doing a project for the homeless children as part of our corporate social responsibility policy, giving back. Because I got challenged, I told them how I got challenged by a homeless person for looking after doing our Live Aid benefit concerts for Africa to raise money for Africa for the children. And this particular person went off the face at me and said, you should be looking after ours here. I told get stuff, don't tell me how to do it. my business, get lost. So she stormed off and up, and then I realized she was actually right. You gotta listen to a woman. Women have this instinct. It's amazing. So I uh, have to apologise. Left a um, recording to apologise. Uh, and then I came to my senses and I got onto it. And we found the greatest need that we have here is to get our children off the street, says 2,600 under the age of six. So that's what we did. So as I said to this bloke, it's neither here nor there, man, with our. You approve of what, what we do or not? I'm only here doing research to see should I waste my damn time dealing with the Maori community in Perth or the Kiwi community if they don't know what we do? Simple as, right? So it's quite offensive, quite abusive, and <laughs> I said to him, "Listen, he challenged me on you know where have you built these cities?" I said, "Mate." We've got all the six key technologies, right? Plus, we've built the sustainable villages. They exist. Sustainable cities, we're still doing, right? Because to build the sustainable cities, we need the high-tech manufacturing hubs built first. You can't build cities unless that's in place first in the frontier and emerging markets. And once that's in place, then they can supply on demand all the environmentally friendly technologies to build cities can be delivered to us just on just in time so he didn't understand this to say but it's not here nor there but he, he run me down he run down the, the concept uh, as I say load of crap it's con job it's deception <laughs> that's what he said so my question to you is do you believe him see 12 hours earlier what happened uh, I talked to the director of the corporate body for Curtin Uni in, of Uni Curtin University of Technology right. one of the number one universities in the world and that's where Professor Peter Newman is and he's in charge of sustainability and he's a friend of mine now um, this uh, corporate leader said to me and he watched that video he said, that's really fascinating what you're doing. He said, um, why are you working in secrecy? I said, mate, we come up against petroleum companies, fossil fuel companies, mining companies, the big banks, the industrialists, mate, you name them. And we're not using fossil fuels, which is what they use. They use in automobiles, we don't use either. I said, do you know, do you know what they're gonna do to us? They sent thousands of assassins to kill us. 
You don't blast your mouth over the, the internet about this type of business where you're cutting them out of business. Because they will kill you. Because one of the big petroleum companies want to run a pipeline through a valley in Nigeria. And there was an indigenous village in there that could hold the project. So they contacted the government and said, we want you to genocide that village. So the government sent in a militia and genocided that village so that they could run their pipelines through. And that village was old people, old leaders, revered old leaders, mums, dads, children, and babies. Genocided the whole lot. This is what we're coming up against. You blast your mouth out there, they'll blast your head off. And that's reality. So, in that uh, particular company, the major shareholder is the Queen of England. How's that? As the major shareholder, you must know what your company's up to. And that particular company had been doing it a long time. Atrocities, genocides against us, indigenous peoples. Think about it. So here I am uh, talking to this guy, and I, this, that was what I told him. But interestingly, right, here's this Kiwi leader running me down. Load of crap, deception, just a dream. <laughs> Two hours before I talked to that boss of Curtin Uni, I sent an email to Professor Peter Newman. So my question to you is, what's the number one profession on the planet? Is it engineering? Aeronautics? Is it accounting? Is it the legal system? Is it construction? What is the number one business or profession on the planet? I'll tell you what it is. Sustainability experts. If you're a sustainability expert, like Professor Peter Newman, who's number one in the world, that's my profession too, but I'm an indigenous sustainability expert. If Professor Peter Newman is the number one sustainability expert in the world for uh, sustainable cities, he wrote the book on it, was launched at the White House to the American Congress. Sustainable cities, how to reduce dependence on automobiles and fossil fuels. It's along those lines, I'll read it. Great book. So he's number one in the world, he's on the UN Intergovernmental Climate Change Panel, the, he's a member of the Infrastructure Committee for Australia, he's the Chief Sustainability Advisor to four of the Premiers for Western Australia here. He's number one in the world. So here's this Kiwi leader telling me. There's a load of crap after you watch the video. It's a con job. It's deception. It's just a big dream, mate. You're a dreamer. That's <laughs> what he said to me. 14 hours earlier, Peter Newman sent me an email after I sent him some information and that video. He watched that video. Now, number one professional in the world, number one leader of the profession, and this is what he said back to me. He sent me back an email that says, I'll support you. He's in. I knew he would. That's what I told my incoming CEO. So Peter will back us, believe you me. Because he's backed me on three of my projects, and I've done 14. And one of those projects was the development of a sustainable village, right? And he said to me, as I was walking out, he says, oh, James, that's my white fella name. He says, James, put my name to it. <laughs> when you got someone like him, says put my name to it, you put his name to it, you get every investor in sustainability, environmental sciences, renewables, line him up to invest with you. That's what he said back then. But yesterday, he said, I'm in. I'll support you. <laughs> yeah. So who are you going to believe? This uh, Kiwi leader, Mary leader, who uh, ran me down. Or do you want to believe the number one person 
in the number one profession on the planet. Because it is the number one profession. Sustainability is the buzzword of business. Everybody's using it. Right? Everybody's using it. Even the rotten banks are using it. Right? Religions are using it. Everybody's using the word sustainability. Indigenous peoples are using it. Businesses are all using it. <laughs> Mate, we've been 30 years on it. Peter's been 50 years. Ali Sae, he's been 105 years. He's <laughs> this old boy. You'll like that comment. So anyway, uh, your choice. Choose who you want to believe. These experts from the, the Maori community, they know all about sustainability, right? <laughs> yeah. And I'm a dreamer. But you see, the key thing I did was I brought up the vision. And you see, it was a load of rubbish. That's what you want. Those who don't like the vision bounce off it. And they think it's like rubbish. That's great, because you can move on. Because what we've got is a locomotive. We're driving it. We pull up at your station. You say, oh, that's what we got. When I jump on board, they say, no, it's a load of rubbish. <laughs> you know, it's a load of crap. It's deceptive. It's a con job. Get lost. See ya. Right. See ya. <laughs> you boot it. Start that locomotive rolling. You go on to the next stop. Find the people there. Jump on board. Your choice. Let's go. Yeah, and this is what's happening. All these people jumping on board, our locomotive. This we had a vision. Right, and the vision says to create a happy future for our children, for our children's children, both indigenous and non-indigenous. He had a problem with that one too. So I'm only interested in my own children. That's all. Stuff everyone else. As soon as I say that, it's like, see you later, man. We're off. Because that's all I care about. But see, our vision. It's not about my children. It's not just about married children. Right? It's not about the children who are rich or religious. No, it's about all children. All children. Who don't care what colour their skin is, what age they are, what level of education they have, what severe and significant mental health problems they have, what drug issues they have. What addictions they have. We don't give a hoot. We don't give a hoot if they've got no education, because we teach them. If they live in a poor suburb, in a poor neighbourhood, if they have a criminal record, even if they were a child minister, we don't give a damn because that can be all reversed through our link technology, permanently reversed. But they won't do those behaviours again. So my question to you is, what is the vision about? Is it just for your own little selfish family? Or is it for all children? It's for the children of the rich too. It's for the Muslims. It's for the uh, um, agnostics and all those other people opposed to religion. We can do it. Children are children. They don't have the big ego problems that the older generations have. They're beautiful. We're happy to work with them. So, this is where we're coming from. And as I said this way, the vision attracts, the vision repels people. I said to them, you know, J.F. Kennedy said in 1960, a vision for America. And the vision was simple. Man to man on the moon for the end of the decade. Americans did it landed a man on the moon, 26th of July, 1969. Neil Armstrong became the next most famous person in human history to Jesus Christ. Landed him on the moon, going back to earth safely. But it was the vision that did it, because the vision, the moment he said that, all the losers, because they'd never heard of it, and he's on the moon, oh, what a load of rubbish, they said exactly what this bloke said. What a load of rubbish. And but what it did, it bounced off all the losers, because they went, ah, rubbish, pulled away. But all the winners stepped up and went, let's have a shot at it. Oh, can we do this? Supporting all the best computer experts, supporting all the best aeronautics. 
uh, all the best space technicians. Mate, they all rocked up <laughs> for NASA, supported NASA. And they had the best of the best of the military as well. And the technologies. Then the government ploughed heaps of money into it. And the vision came to fruition. 1969. What they did for America, they put position America at the front of everything. The front of finance for Wall Street, at the front of aeronautics, space travel, at the front of um, computer technologies, right? Silicon Valley, you name it, America was at the front because John F. Kennedy made one simple statement, a vision for America. By the end of this decade, we will land a man on the moon. It was the vision that did it. And you see, I learned from Mark Fridson, you've got to build a visionary company. It's driven by vision. The vision attracts the people who are going to pull it off. The vision repels the people who are going to say what this leader said to me last night. <laughs> I'm sitting there. So he said that I shut my laptop. I was going to actually show him the PowerPoint presentation, but I didn't. I said, ah, I'll just waste my time. Start that loco rolling, man. Let's get the hell out of here. Uh, so I did. So <clears throat> don't worry about what people say about our vision. Just believe in it. It's going to come real. All right. That's all right. My message to you, the DigiGen. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to cut this off and do another video.